dwarf apple tree right for your backyard orchard. Let's talk about that. So I just put up a vertical axis uh, system video for the backyard and I just hopped right over to do a semi-dwarf discussion and it's the same weather. It hasn't warmed up here at all. Uh, a little, little snow falling and it's about 23 degrees and again I'm glad to see it because we were getting a little bit too warm too early. So uh, let's talk about the semi-dwarf. It's probably the most common tree that's planted here in America just because every store you go to that sells trees has those five gallon potted apple trees. They call them a five gallon pot. Um, my five gallon buckets are a lot bigger than those pots that those trees are in, but they're called a five gallon potted tree. And uh, you know, that's where you find all your favorite varieties, your Honeycrisp, Golden Delicious, Fuji, and they'll be for sale there at the store. And we buy those and we bring them home. Uh, they go in the backyard. All right, that's just kind of the thing to do. There's nothing wrong with that. That's uh, just, just common. All right, well, this tree behind me is a semi-dwarf tree and this tends to be what we get. All right, yours may not look like this and a lot of mine didn't way back when, but this tends to be uh, what we get when we buy a semi-dwarf tree. So not only are these semi-dwarf trees just readily available, but they're great in the backyard because if you've got just enough room for a couple of trees, uh, they'll fill the space. Um, another great advantage to them, like we've been discussing with the tall spindle and the vertical axis orchards, is that they need support, all right? Semi-dwarf trees don't really need support in the backyard. Most of them don't. Every now and then you'll have to prop one up, but uh, by and large, none of my semi-dwarf trees need any support. So that's another great advantage to the whole system. Your semi-dwarf trees are gonna be planted about 15 feet apart. You can manage them in a tighter spacing than that, but to be able to mow around effectively, they're gonna to wanna to grow. They get pretty big. So about 15 feet is the going rate between semi-dwarf trees, and they're gonna get some height on them. I try to manage mine anywhere around uh, 12 feet, and it's sometimes tough keeping them there. So a couple other big considerations with the semi-dwarf and just how they differ from the tall spindle and vertical axis, uh, just a big difference on tree height and spacing. But now for the disadvantages. Well, you're gonna get fewer trees, fewer varieties that is, in that backyard space, simply because you may only have enough room to put uh, two semi-dwarf trees where you might've been able to put uh, half a dozen dwarf trees on a trellis. So your varieties are gonna be diminished down to just a couple. May be fine with you and that's your choice. But I consider that a little bit of a disadvantage to the semi-dwarf. Uh, another one is pruning, is a little more difficult. This, all of these systems have your basic um, uh, pruning requirements, all right? It's a little pruning guide, if you will. And, and this, a semi-dwarf tree that just being able to access parts of the tree to prune it to begin with is more difficult than a tree that you can reach from the ground. So that's a disadvantage. On that same token, picking the fruit is tougher than a tree that you can reach most of it anyway from the ground. So you'll need a ladder to do a lot of your picking and you're reaching out off of that ladder and that's more difficult. So I would put that into the disadvantage column. Really the number one reason that I am giving up on semi-dwarf trees in the future, I'm not there yet, but in the future is spraying. I just cannot effectively spray these trees. It takes a large volume of spray to get up into these canopies. The spray when you're spraying up high like that comes right back down on you a lot of times. You really just gotta play the wind. And I don't like doing that. Um, I'm done with that. So these trees will eventually come out and that's the number one reason. There's other reasons, that's just number one. And one that I think you really will want to consider, especially when you've, you've gotten the opportunity to uh, look at some videos maybe on taking care of the vertical axis and tall spindle and just how simple that is. Because that's what you do in the summertime. Pruning is a pretty much a once a year thing. Uh, a lot of the maintenance things that we do with our apple trees is a once a year thing, but spring, that goes from spring 
uh, sometime not too far in front of harvest. So you're doing that all summer long. And if you got trees that that's just a bear to do, you're not gonna wanna do that. And, and in the backyard where you're close to the house and you know certainly you wouldn't want any drift getting anywhere where there's kids and, and all that kind of thing. So probably my biggest concern with the semi-dwarfs and number one reason why I'm getting away from them. But uh, these old guys, they're gonna be here for just a little while longer. And we'll certainly go through another few seasons with them. So join me this season as we take care of some of these trees just like this. Um, this just happens to be a, an old semi-dwarf Liberty uh, that's been in pretty good production for quite a few years now. Stay tuned, we'll see how it does. Thanks for watching.